Hi, Young Investor Society. This is James Fletcher, founder of Young Investor Society. And today we're going to talk about step two of the five steps to financial freedom, which is how do we save money? We're going to understand how that we create and maintain a budget, and then we'll create a sample budget um, for us personally. What do you think is the leading cause of divorce um, for most people in the world? Surprisingly, the leading cause of divorce is financial problems. And, and helping our financial problems start with creating a budget and learning how to save money. So what is a budget? What do you think a budget is? A budget is a simple um, plan that maps our expenses and our income every month. Why is it important to save money? Because we can only invest money and only compound money and create wealth in the future if we know how to save it. So you must first know where all of your money is going every month. And that is what a budget does. A budget is simply a list of expected income and expenses for a given period of time. So usually you'd, you would do a budget over a month or a year or sometimes you would have a 10 year budget. Uh, families create budgets, even corporations create budgets, and even governments create budgets. Knowing how to create a budget is, is one of the key uh, principles in your life. So a budget help you, helps you know where your cash flows go and how much money is, one, coming in, and two, coming out during a period of time. If more money is going out than is coming in, you have what we would call negative cash flow. Um, which is a problem. And if less money is going out than is coming in, you would have positive cash flow, and there you would be able to save and have money to invest. So what are some examples of money coming in, or what we call income? These could come from a variety of sources. Um, first and foremost, uh, it comes from your paycheck, um, your, your weekly or monthly salary that you receive uh, from working. Um, this also may come from bonuses, so you may receive a bonus from your job. Um, you can also receive income from interest in your banking or savings account. You can also receive income from stock dividends and also interest from bonds. So these are all the way, ways that you can have money coming in. Um, what about expenses? What are the, some of the common expenses? These would be rent or paying mortgage, car loan payments, utility payments, gas and car maintenance, groceries, entertainment expenses, health care costs, which we often forget about, clothing expenses, all of the things we spend money on, which I think we all have a good idea, these are all of our expenses. And so how do we manage our budget? Let's do a handout, handout number one. And in this handout, we're going to give you an example of Sarah. And Sarah is running cash flow negative. Now the challenge during this handout is to find ways where she can turn her situation around and be cash flow positive. So take a look at handout number one and then we'll come back and review. Okay, how did you do on Sarah's budget? Were you, find, were you able to find ways to make her cash flow positive? What were some of the expenses that you were able to eliminate? Maybe it was the entertainment, the food expense, maybe it was the cell phone bill. Um, the other thing to think about is, were you able to find ways to increase her income? So maybe it was a side job on the side, as she's a newly uh, graduated college, um, uh, newly graduated from college. Um, or, or did you find a way for her to possibly pursue a career where she could have more income? or reduce her housing bill or utilities. Um, these are the key issues that you will have in your life when you're managing a budget and trying to become cash flow positive. Um, the next activity I would encourage you to do is the personal budget web quest. And you can click on the link um, and, and this is something that you can map out a budget of how it may look in your life. And this is a realistic um, uh, budget where you can go through the expenses, 
the income, the tax implications. Um, this takes a little more time, but I'd encourage you to do this web quest on your own time. Um, okay, so let's turn to the question and answer period of this lesson. What are some of the common questions that we receive when we talk about saving money? Uh, the first one is, and this is, this is a very simple question, but I get, James, do I really need a budget? Isn't that kind of old fashioned? What if I just wing it myself? Um, the answer I would give to this is, sometimes it is shocking and eye-opening when you actually write out and see a budget. So some people may be naturally gifted at controlling expenses and um, controlling their uh, cash inflows and outflows. But others, it may be uh, surprising when you go look and evaluate a budget and try and stick to it. So even if you don't do a budget every month or every year, I would encourage you periodically to go back and review and see what stands out, see what's surprising you. And um, it's almost like the, the um, Apple Screen Time app where you can go and see how you used your screen time and it's often shocking when you go see the results. Um, a budget is similar, so I'd encourage you to go through that, this exercise and it will help you. It's helped me in my life as well. Second question we get is, uh, I'm not a numbers person. Um, how do I manage my finances and my bank accounts when I'm not naturally a numbers person? It's a good question. Um, what I would recommend is find apps or find websites um, or find your mobile banking that can automate the budgeting process for you. So a lot of your banks, your online banking, will have the ability to look at your main expenses and review it for you. Um, there are apps um, and programs such as Mint.com in the United States, personal finance budgeting apps. I'd highly encourage you to get set up on these uh, systems. So even if you're not a numbers person, you can easily see graphically or visually the inflows and outflows every month. And the best thing about these is that it's automated so that it will naturally track over time and follow your bank account. A third question that we received is, um, are there periods of time where going negative cash flow is not so bad, like going to college or when you're first starting out? It's a great question, and there are periods of time where it does make sense to have negative cash flow and even to go into debt. And, and college is a great example of many people, including myself, um, will have loans and go to college because the human capital, the benefit that you're getting from this is, is significant down the road. And so there are periods in your life where you may be cash flow negative. Um, and especially if you're tracking your expenses when you're saving up, let's say, for a down payment on a car or a down payment on a home. You know, this year, that year, you may be cash flow negative or that month, but it's because you saved up and saved up. Um, but what I would strongly encourage you to, to do is to not be um, systematically cash flow negative so that you're increasing your debt. That is a spiral, a trap that you can find yourself in and pretty soon it becomes very tough to dig yourself out of it. So be very wary of being negative cash flow for months or years consistently and accumulating debt. Um, but I, what I would say is there are times when being negative cash flow makes sense for you, your success in the long run. So I hope this helps and I hope you enjoyed this lesson.